Another year has flown by and what a year it's been, but we are now at a point when Autodesk enriches our lives with another feature packed version of Maya. Yes, Maya 2023 is here and I've had a few weeks to dig in and explore some of the new tools and updates available. So what I'd like to do is share some of these with you all today. One of the big focuses this year has been on Maya's modeling tools with Autodesk focusing on functionality as well as performance. But other areas like animation, rigging and USDs have also seen improvements. This release also sees a shift over to Python 3, so Python 2 will no longer be supported like it currently is. So grab a drink, sit back and let's take a look at what's new. Let's start with a look at the modelling side. And the first area I want to show you are the improvements to the retopology tools. First, let's look at them in action in Maya 2022. So here we have some scan data, and this skull is around 150,000 triangles. Why don't we try and reduce this to around 2,000 polygons, using the default settings. Now I'm going to speed this up because it's going to take a while. In fact, once done, it's taken around 15 minutes to complete. Here's the result. Now let's switch to Maya 2023 and see how that handles the same model. So we have the skull. And let's use the same settings. Wow, that took around six seconds, so much, much quicker. What Autodesk have done is collaborate with the 3D Studio Max team as well as another internal team to develop some new technology which they are calling Reform. This is their own in-house retopology system which now exists in a few of Autodesk's products and has been in 3D Studio Max for a while now. You see here we have a new checkbox, Pre-Process Mesh. This is a new option which will effectively check the model and optimise it before the retopology begins. And this is what helps speed up the process. Let's compare the results. If I show the polygon count, we can see that in Maya 2022, although we asked for a model which was close to 2,000 faces or quads, we ended up with one which is closer to 19,000, so that's way off. How about the Maya 2023 model? So this is much closer, roughly 2,204 faces. Not only was it quicker, but it was also more accurate. Plus, I think the resulting topology is much cleaner too. Now it's nowhere near perfect, but it's a really good start. Let's look at another example. Here we have a character with some clothing which was created in Marvelous Designer. Now the polygon count is too high, and the topology is too dense, so it could do with a cleanup. Let's use a retopology tool in Maya 2022 first, and again I will speed this up. Okay, so to rework both the shirt and the shorts has taken around 14 minutes. Now let's repeat this in Maya 2023. And I can just let this run in real time because it's so quick. So again, the new version of Maya wins out, although you can tell with this model that the UVs have also been lost in the process. It would be nice if Maya would try to retain the UVs where possible. I know you could use the Transfer Attributes tool, but it's another step in the process which could realistically be automated. Let's take a look at the topology now. It's all well and good being quicker, but are the results any better? Actually, the Maya 2023 version seems to have lost a lot of the creases and folds, whereas the 2022 version has retained that detail. What I want to do now is quickly do the same thing, but in ZBrush using ZRemesher. So that was just seven seconds and we have a nice result. Let's look at all the models together now. The original model is on the left, 
ZBrush is on the right and the version retopologized in Maya 2023 is in the middle. You can clearly see the detail missing from the middle model, but as a bonus we can go in and adjust the settings to get a better result. So that looks cleaner, but we are still missing the folds at the back, so we would probably need to increase the target polygon count to bring those back in. Now this is a huge improvement over 2022's tools, but to be honest, I still prefer to do my own retopology or just use ZBrush because I have more control over the edge loops. If Autodesk implemented some way of guiding the edge flow, much like ZBrush does, then it would make this tool even more powerful and I would probably use it more. Sticking with modeling, Maya 2023 offers some enhanced stack based Boolean tools to make the process more streamlined and flexible. Let's add some simple details to the front wing on this car model. I'll create some basic shapes first and duplicate this a few times. There we go. Okay, so let's say I want to take these away from the wing, leaving some nice concave shapes. If I go down to Boolean, you can see we have some new options. Previously, we only had union, difference and intersection. On a side note, you can also right click on the shelf button too to access these options. By default though, that will apply the difference AB option. So let's just use that now to get us started. Straight away things are looking different. The main mesh display has changed to an orange wireframe. What we can also see is a new boolean tab now open on the right. If I deselect the sphere, you see we lose a tab, which is slightly annoying and what we have all become used to with Maya. At this stage I would usually just copy the tab so it remains open no matter what I select but Autodesk have finally added the ability to keep the current selection in the attribute editor. All you need to do is pin it using this icon here, which is a really nice little addition. Now if I deselect the sphere, the selection remains. Okay, let's look at the boolean. Firstly, the order which I selected the models wasn't correct, but we can easily reorder them in the editor here and it recalculates and updates. That's better. We can also change the operation type too. And we can change the display type. What about these other spheres though? We ideally want to take these away from the wing too, but I don't want to add two more Boolean operations to the history. The cool thing about the new update is we can simply drag them into the stack and the Boolean will update. Let's change the operation to difference AB and update the display too. Now we can simply do the same to add the last sphere. So it's all very easy and interactive. What we can also do is update the position of the spheres and this will update the boolean too although it is a bit slow. And we can also quickly enable and disable each mesh. So there we go, a new and improved boolean, which is a lot more streamlined and user friendly. Another update to modeling is the overall performance, and this is a welcome addition. Like many of you, I've been in the position 
where you're building something and once you hit those higher polygon counts, Maya tends to slow down. Maya 2023 is said to be 30 times faster when it comes to component manipulation. Plus the addition of node caching means that editing something in the model's history takes up to six times faster because Maya is no longer evaluating each piece of history as it applies the updates. Let me show you the difference with a couple of examples. This is Maya 2022, and I have a high resolution model I need to work on. I'll select some of the vertices on the shoulder, and now enable symmetry, and we have to wait. There we go. Now let's change the selection. So we have an obvious pause now, and this is due to the fact that I have soft selection enabled too. I want to adjust the fall off now, so I hold down B and drag with the middle mouse button. And we can see there is a clear delay on this. And it's things like this which break the modeling workflow. I can now move the vertices and performance is okay, it's just a soft selection adjustment. Let's switch to Maya 2023 now. Vertex selection with soft selection enabled is much quicker. So is fall off adjustment. Okay, let's enable symmetry. Remember this had a big delay in Maya 2022. And that was pretty much instant. And so is changing the selection. So this is a big improvement. Now soft selections fall off adjustment is still slow, but much faster than before. Let's look at another example. Back in Maya 2022, if I enable soft selection on this skull, the performance takes a huge hit. You can see we are hitting three, maybe four frames per second. Not just with vertex selection, but also manipulating the viewport. If we do the same in Maya 2023, it's much faster, hitting larger frame rates of around 19 frames per second. And it jumps up to the 20s when we rotate around the skull. There's one more modeling update I want to share, and that's the ability to adjust the wireframe's opacity. We have all been there. You have a high density model in the scene, but when the wireframe is visible, it just becomes a green or blue blob and you can no longer see the model's surface. Let's enable wireframe on shaded. And what we need to do is open the color settings options. Now go to the interactive tab and under the object selection, find polygon surfaces. If we select the color swatch, you see that there is now an alpha channel. We can adjust this to make the wireframe less harsh, so we can also see the model as well as its topology. It's a small thing, but useful if you work on a lot of high resolution meshes. Let's look at some of the other updates, and one of my personal favorites is that we can now hide the unit conversion nodes in the node editor. You can access this option in the display menu, this really helps to declutter the node editor when working on larger networks. On the animation side, we have the blue pencil, which is new in Maya 2023 and replaces the grease pencil. What this allows you to do is write directly on the panel, which is great for animation leads to help guide their animators and provide feedback. It could also be used in other areas too. So you could interactively show which areas need to be updated on your team's models and rigs. Let's see a quick example. We have an animation here that I did a while ago, so clearly this needs no work done to it because it's already perfect. Yeah, okay. But seriously, even now I can see areas of improvement. Let's say I want to annotate the scene so I can send this back to an animator with some direction. I activate the blue pencil here and it gives me this toolbar. We can also open the tool settings to get more options. All we need to do now is draw on the screen and it creates a new blue pencil keyframe and also a new layer. 
You will notice there are two options here which will take the input from your graphics tablet if you're using one. So it will use the pen's pressure to dictate the brush's opacity and size. Now I'm using a Wacom Cintiq, but even with these enabled, I'm not getting any difference with the brush. Hopefully this will be fixed in the final release though, as it would be nice if it worked. Let's make the brush smaller. And let's say we want her to gesture with her left arm here, because she's looking a little static. We can simply draw here to indicate where we think the arm should go. Now move back a few frames. And this can be the starting point. The arm can come back down at this point. If it's starting to look too cluttered, we can adjust the ghosting options so we can disable the frames before the current one. or the ones after. OK, so now let's add some text to make it clear what we want to happen. I can quickly add an arrow. And right up here. I do find though that the blue pencil isn't as responsive when writing. As you can see, part of the text is missing. Let's undo that and use the type option instead. We need to change the tool to bake it into the frame. There we go. Maybe we need a blink here too, to break up the stair. OK, let's use the type option again. Now this is just a very quick example, but this has the potential to be a powerful tool when it comes to art direction. And there's lots of options to play with, like adding multiple layers and changing the ink colour, you also have a transform tool too, so you can move parts of the frame around if you need to. For me though, if the performance could be improved, it would make it much better for those quick notes and annotations. Now what's good about Blue Pencil is these frames are saved with the scene, so you don't need to export them separately. Now the downside is, this isn't currently backwards compatible so you would need to make sure the whole team was using Maya 2023 for this to be usable on your project. Over the years, Maya has become more and more complicated with many new options and tools being added each year. So sometimes it can be jarring having to search through the menus to find a specific tool. Maya 2023 now has a long overdue search function and this has also been available in recent updates to Maya 2022. As an example, let's apply a quick smooth mesh operation to this model. So rather than search through the menus, I can simply click this magnifying glass icon, or alternatively you can press Ctrl and F to bring up a floating search window. We can change what it is we want to do. So as you can see, we can search for something, select something, or run a quick Mel or Python command. So let's search for smooth. I'll select the model first, and you could also do this using the search tool. 
You see, it now brings up all the tools and operations which are related to Smooth. It's not just searching for the name. We just want the first result, and we can click here to open the options. And we can apply that. Let's now show the joint's rotational axes. So now we select a joint, and let's look for rotational. Here we go, and that's visible. Previous search results which you used are also kept here below it, so you can quickly find them again too. Like adjusting the joint size here. So that's just a quick overview of some of the updates available in Maya 2023. There are a whole host of others, including updates to the rigging and animation tools, as well as USDs, and these are listed on the screen now. Now as welcome as these updates are, I'm not entirely sure they warrant a full release. Traditionally, each new version of Maya comes with a standout feature, something new to make us feel like we must upgrade. With Maya 2020, we had the matrix nodes and offset parent matrix attributes. With 2022, they introduced the addition of USD support, component tags, Python 3, and a whole host of other updates. If you're like me, most of my clients are still using Maya 2020, with a few still lingering on 2019, so I'm not even fully switched over to 2022 myself. With that said, I will be using Maya 2023 from here on for all my modelling tasks, because I feel like all the performance improvements that have been included with this release will have an impact on my day-to-day -day workflow. Okay, that's another video over. Thanks for watching right to the end, and make sure you also check out some of the other free videos and courses that I have available. You can find links to all these on the screen now and in the description below. Remember, to help support future content and keep these videos free, visit the Ant CGI store or join the Ant CGI club. Alternatively, if you would just like to show your appreciation for these videos, why not treat me to a coffee at my coffee page? Again, the link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again for watching, this is Ant CGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.